Welcome back, tech enthusiasts. I'm Andreas, and today I'm joining Simon on this channel to guide you through the exciting process of building a high-performance server, um, perfect for beginners. Today's setup is designed to give you a strong foundation with enough power to handle serious workloads, all while being accessible to those new to the field. So let's dive right in. For this build, Simon provided us with some excellent second-hand components. An old server case, as you can see it in the picture, a powerful NVIDIA M40 GPU with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, an AMD Ryzen 5 5600G CPU, and 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. All together, this setup came to a total cost of around 480 Swiss francs, which is making it an affordable yet powerful option for anyone looking to get started on a budget. First up, we have the heart of our system, the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G CPU. This 6-core processor is an absolute powerhouse, perfect for our server setup. But before we install it into our new motherboard, we need to carefully remove it from its original socket. Remember, when handling the CPU, always be gentle. Those pins are delicate. The AMD Ryzen 5 5600G CPU costs approximately 125 Swiss francs at the moment, which is around 148 US dollars. Now it's time to introduce our CPU to its new home, the ASRock B450M Pro 4 R2.0 motherboard. This board features the AM4 socket, uh, making it perfectly compatible with our Ryzen 5600G. At the moment, the motherboard costs around 60 Swiss francs, which is around 71 US dollars. Align the golden triangle on the CPU with the triangle on the socket. Place it gently and secure it by lowering the lever. It's easy as that. Next up, we're boosting our server's memory capacity with not just one, but two 32 gigabyte DDR4 RAM sticks. That's a whopping 64 gigabytes of RAM, more than enough to handle our most demanding tasks. You can find DDR4 RAM sticks online in a double package. So um, I found them for about 100 Swiss francs online, which is 119 US dollars. Install each module into the appropriate slot, ensuring they click into the place. The RAM is our server's short-term memory, crucial for keeping everything running smoothly. Now let's move on to the star of our build, the NVIDIA M40 GPU. Um, it comes with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, making it ideal for intense computing tasks. Prices for NVIDIA M40 GPUs, they change a lot. So at the moment I found them for about 140 Swiss francs, which is around 166 US dollars. Um, if the price is too high at the moment, just give it some time. They will come down eventually. We are adding custom cooling with 3D printed fan hubs and extra fans to keep it running cool under pressure. We use two Arctic S4028 6K fans. Um, they came in a bundle, so the price you see is probably a little less than if you buy them individually. The material for the 3D print um, cost about 2 francs, so we come to a total cost of 15 francs or 18 dollars for the cooling system. The noise is moderately loud for LLMs, but it gets pretty noisy 
once um, a CNN model is running. So just keep that in mind. Finally, let's give our server some lightning fast storage with a 500 gigabyte M2 SSD. This drive will handle all our data storage and retrieval needs with incredible speed. The M2 SSD with a capacity of 500 gigabytes cost us around 40 Swiss francs, or at least that's the price you find online at the moment, which is around 48 US dollars. Install the SSD into the M2 slot, secure it with a screw, and we're good to go. This little drive may be small, but it's mighty in terms of performance. If we break down the cost of this powerful yet budget-friendly setup, we total in a cost of 480 Swiss francs, which equals around 570 US dollars. This build is a great example of how you can create a robust machine for LLM usage or CNN usage without breaking the bank. One of the easiest ways to cut down on expenses is by reusing old parts that you already own. For example, if you have an old power supply, an SSD or even an old case lying around, you can incorporate those into your new build. This not only saves money but also makes good use of reliable components that still have plenty of life left in them. Here's a quick look at cost per VRAM across different GPUs. The NVIDIA Tesla M40 offers the best value at 5.85 Swiss francs per gigabyte. The Tesla P40 comes in higher at 12.5 and the RTX 3090 tops the chart at 33.35 Swiss francs. But keep in mind, prices are always changing, so it might be worth waiting for a good deal to maximize your budget. After completing the setup, we ran into a few difficulties when trying to install Windows and make full use of the GPU's VRAM. Here's how we resolved them. First, we needed to format the disk to MBR, uh, as our BIOS-based system requires this format to properly install Windows. Let me walk you through the steps. Start by pressing Shift plus F10 during the window setup to open the command prompt. Then enter the following commands one by one. Step one, type list disk and press enter to display the available disks. Step two, identify the disk you want to format, then type select disk and the number of your disk and press enter again. Step three, uh, type clean and press enter. This will erase all data on the selected disk, so make sure you've backed up anything important. Then step four, uh, type convert MBR and press enter to convert your disk. And step five, finally type exit to close the command prompt and continue with the Windows installation. For GPUs with a large amount of VRAM like ours, there are two critical settings in the BIOS. Um, CSM, the compatibility support module, must be disabled. And above 4G decoding must be enabled. We had to Google the problem to find the solution, which, as often is the case, turned out to be quite simple in the end. With these adjustments, we were finally able to get everything running smoothly and our system was able to fully utilize the GPU's VRAM for maximum performance. Now it's time to test some large language models. We first tried to use LLM Studio, but unfortunately we ran into errors that prevented us from loading the models there. Instead, we switched to the command prompt, as you can see on the screen. We will load our models from olama.com. After copying the download link from olama, we'll enter it into the command prompt. 
Once the download is complete, we'll run the models with the verbose command to get detailed metrics. Just a quick note, the prompts you'll see in this and the upcoming clips will always be sped up for the sake of time. But don't worry, you won't miss the details. Um, you can see the GPU load in the window to the right with the red bar almost at 100%. This shows how intensely the GPU is being utilized during these processes. Right now, you can see the Llama 3.1 8B Q4 model um, running on the screen. For all of you who are new to this, let me break that down for you. Llama 3.1 is the version of the model we're using. The 8B stands for 8 billion parameters. These parameters allow the model to generate complex and nuanced text. And the Q4 refers to the 4-bit quantization, which means the model is optimized to be more efficient using less computational power while still delivering strong performance. We'll be comparing this model to others with different quantization levels to figure out which might be the best match for our build. Now let's take a closer look at the performance metrics of the Llama 8B models on our NVIDIA M40 GPU. The chart here shows the tokens per second for each model variant. Starting with the Q4, we see a solid performance of around 15.4 tokens per second. Moving to the Q6, there's a slight dip, bringing it down to about 12.5 tokens per second. However, when we switch to the Q8, there's a noticeable spike reaching up to 18.5 tokens per second, which is the highest performance in this comparison. Um, and finally, the FP16, uh, there we observe a drop in performance down to around 11 tokens per second. Let's move on to the performance metrics for the Chema 9B model on our NVIDIA M40. Here's how it stacks up. Starting with the Q4 variant, we see a performance of 11.85 tokens per second. Moving to the Q6 variant, there's a slight drop to 9.82 tokens per second. However, the Q8 variant shows again a significant boost reaching 14.2 tokens per second, making it the fastest in this comparison. Lastly, the FP16 variant processes at 8.9 tokens per second, which is the slowest among these. Now a quick note on what FP16 means. FP stands for floating point. And in this context, FP16 refers to 16-bit floating point precision. This means the model uses 16 bits to represent numbers, which can lead to more precise calculations, but often at the cost of speed, as we see here. Next, let's take a look at the performance metrics for the Chema 27B models. As you might expect with a larger model like this, we see a noticeable slowdown in token processing speed. Starting with the Q4 variant, we're processing at 4.9 tokens per second. Moving to the Q6 variant, the speed drops further to 3.3. Given the performance trade-offs, the Chema 27B models, particularly in the Q4 and the Q6 configurations, might not be the best match for our setup if speed is a priority. However, if you are working on tasks that require the extensive capabilities of a 27B model and can tolerate longer processing times, it's still a viable option. Next up, we're moving on to Convolutional Neural Networks, or CNNs, to test their performance in image creation. We'll start with the Stable Diffusion Model SDXL Turbo FP16. For this next part, we're using Forge, a web UI that's well suited for NVIDIA GPUs. 
you can find it in Pinocchio. Um, I stopped the web UI temporarily to download the models I wanted to work with. Now I've selected the SDXL Turbo model and adjusted the settings. We're going with an image size of 512 to 512 pixels and setting the steps to 60. There are plenty of settings you can tweak, but for this test I'm just adding a style to create some ninja cats in this image. It takes a moment for the GPU to ramp up to full load, but it does eventually kick in. After a minute and 29 seconds, the image is complete. I have to admit, it's not my favorite result. I'd probably change some settings if I were to use this image in the future. Next up, we're testing the Flux1 Schnell FP8 model. Um, for all of you guys who do not speak German, Schnell means fast. Um, we'll be using the same settings as before, image size to 512 and 60 steps. And we let the model run. This time the process takes significantly longer. After a lengthy 8 minutes and 43 seconds, the image is finally complete. It's a much slower performance compared to the previous model, which is something to keep in mind depending on your needs. Though I must say, I like this image much better. Let's compare the two models by measuring the seconds per step. This is calculated by dividing the total time each image took by the 60 steps we set in the settings. The SDXL Turbo was significantly faster, clocking in at 2.92 seconds per step. In contrast, it took the Flux 1 model 8.7 seconds for each step. What's next? Well, first we're planning to boost our setup with a second NVIDIA M40 GPU to enhance performance. After that, we'll be exploring different LLMs, um, including different series like the Ultralight series, which is designed for smartphones, then a light series, for example, with the Apple M1 or M2 chip, and and we also plan to do a chunky series where, for example, models like Mistral Large 2 um, can be tested. And here's a fun fact. House cats and tigers share 95.6% of their DNA. I have to say, I'll definitely be seeing my cat in a different light from now on. We want to keep sharing fun facts like this with you guys, so if you got a good one, leave it in the comments. Thank you.